this one right here is going to be Dan Schneider. If you've heard all the controversy around that name, the quiet on set come out recently. It's all over TikTok. Everybody's talking about it. He's decided to have an interview to address everything. So um, let's see how it goes. We'll see. I don't know what he could possibly say to um, declare his name because there's literally nothing he can do in my opinion. Like that stuff. I mean, he's, he's literally caught in 4K. Like it's, it's he's done. He been done, but he done done. Like he be, he he been done, but he done he done for sure. He's not in jail. I don't know how. He's not in jail, but like, it's actually crazy. It's actually crazy. It's Boogie. I played T-Bow on Nickelodeon's iCarly. I got a chance to watch the Quiet On Set program, and I reached out to Dan to see if it was something that he'd be willing to discuss. I'm pleased to say that he said yes. Dan, how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about uh, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack. Um, but before I dive into my list of... So this is this is a dude that played TiVo and I, Curly. Um, he tried to sell you tacos on a stick. Hard shell tacos. He worked with Dan Schneider. Topics that I'd like to discuss. Is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, um, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massages. Strong okay. apology. Watching the content yesterday, it was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. Yeah. Dan, talk to me about the writer's room. From what I saw, Oh, he's cool. no, no. Weird I mean, ass is an understatement. I'm to cut you off, but if I can cut right to the chase, let me just say, no writer should ever feel uncomfortable in any writer's room, ever. Period. The end. No excuses. Um, most TV writers, comedy writers, have been in writers' rooms, and they are aware that a lot of times there are inappropriate jokes made and inappropriate topics come up. Uh, but the fact that I participated in that, especially when I was leading the room, um, it embarrasses me. I shouldn't have done it. Um, and, and, and I can tell you why it hurts really bad for me. Um, I remember very clearly my early experiences, my first experiences in the entertainment business. I was green. I was scared. I was excited. My thing is, is like, he thinks saying this is going to really save him or something. Like, he's just, he's completely full of it. He's completely full of it. He was abusing so many, so many of the child actors on Nickelodeon. I mean, it's, it's like I said, I don't know how he's not in jail. Like, I just don't know how he's not. It, it, it meant the world to me that I was getting those opportunities. And I went in and I got lucky because they were great. My first couple of experiences were fantastic. And the fact that and the fact that I didn't pay that forward to every employee that walked through my door, yeah. it, it, it hurts my heart, because I should have. And I wish I could go back and fix that. Um, in the writer's room, there's no doubt that sometimes those jokes went beyond the pale, and I said things that went too far, or made practical jokes that w went too far, and um, that was wrong. And that, that was because you know I was an inexperienced producer, I was immature, wouldn't happen today, but um, I'm just really sorry it happened. Now, we know you've had a lot of success over two decades. Thousands of people have worked with you, for you. 
Okay. Let's speak directly to the people who did not have a good experience with you. Okay, I would like to speak to those people because I hate that anybody worked for me and didn't have a good time. You know me. You've been on my sets. Um, this look, has got to be the most that worked with me for ten years. Some fake interview I've ever seen in my life. With me again, but um, not everybody. There's a still a significant. Like I don't even know what to didn't say. Didn't have a great time working for me. So my batting average isn't nearly high enough in that area. Um, and the way they wouldn't get the best of me is that I would let the pressure of doing 40 or even more episodes per year, I would let that pressure get to me, which a good boss should never, ever do. So there are specific things that you were doing. Sh sure, I would um, snap at people sometimes. Mm -hmm. I would be snarky when I could have given them a nicer answer. Um, I would not give people the time that they need. He would stand people in the middle of the set and berate them and call them all kinds of names under the sun in front of everybody and embarrass them. I mean, like... Needed, I would be in too big a hurry to get on to the next thing I had to do. And watching that show, it made me... There were so many times I wanted to pick up a phone and call some of those people and say, I'm so sorry and let's talk about it. And I, I wish you'd had a better time and I wish I could have shown you a better experience. Yeah. Now... You've written hundreds of episodes. Thousands of jokes have been told. Yeah. But currently where we are, uh -huh. some people think that some of those jokes are inappropriate for children. Uh -huh. What do you think of that? <sighs> All these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny mm. and only funny. Okay, um, now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens and they're looking at them and they're saying, oh, you know, I don't think that's appropriate for, for a kid show. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that. If, if that's how anyone feels, let's cut those jokes out of the show. Just like I would have done 20 years ago or 25 years ago. Just like, cut it. I want my shows to be popular. I want everyone to like it. The more people who like the shows, the happier I am. Yeah. So if there's anything in a show that needs to be cut because it's upsetting somebody, let's cut it. So I think it's big for you to say with your work, mm -hmm. if it's Ow. viewed as that today, you don't have a problem. Cut it. Cut it. I mean, that's a solution. The, the last thing I want to ever do yeah. is put any content in a show that's going to upset my audience and make them want to turn on. He's just lying. He's just lying. He's just saying nothing. Oh my god. If you if you oh my god. If you grew up watching Victorious, Drake and Josh, iCarly, all that. Feet stuff, having Ariana Grande doing some very sexualized positions on her throat in Victorious and Sam and Paul movie. It's just, it's crazy. Like, he was in charge of all that crap. And he's saying, we could have just cut it. And he really, he's really trying to tell people that, well, Nobody said anything, so it's not my fault. They did say something. They were saying something for quite a while. It just seems to be we're in a day and age where unless it's made into a documentary, no one's going to listen to it. That's, the, that's, I mean, that's, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't. We're not those same kids we were 20 years ago. The TV. Why would I ever want to do that? That makes sense. I want to give you an opportunity to kind of elaborate on some things. Okay. The thought process from the series is you had the power to just write a joke and no matter what, it's going on TV. You just had that type of power. Is that true? The, the notion that I had the power to just produce whatever I wanted and have it air is completely false. Okay. There were many, many levels of scrutiny. Okay. We had executives in LA. We had executives in New York. 
So two coasts. Two coasts okay. of, of, of approval, coast. yes. And, not, and by the way, approval at every stage, really. Okay. And I'm talking about wardrobe. I'm talking about makeup, sound, sets, dialogue, jokes, everything. Now, when you say approval, these obviously that's a hierarchy, not your no, colleagues right. and people in the room. Okay. No, no, not my colleagues. No, these are my bosses. Bosses, and then their bosses, and then their bosses. And they're approving all of this stuff. Okay. Okay? And we're also shooting it in front of all sorts of adults and caregivers and the set teacher and, and the families. Everybody's watching it. And if anybody had said anything, hey, we don't like that. That's not appropriate. You then, it would have been... That's not true. Yeah, he does. And he's promising these parents all of this fame and all this money that their kid can get. they've seen stuff that they didn't like and it's anything impossible but I guarantee you he reminded them of what they would be losing blah 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 and you know guilted them into just gaslit them into thinking oh well maybe we're just not he just has a different kind of humor or whatever blah 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 he's just, it's just a little weird It's not good. It's just really not. It's really not a good situation, and it makes me really sad thinking about my favorite um, actress back then. We're going through so much like you. You'd never have an idea because we were kids. I mean, I, I I wouldn't have known any of this, and it sucks that it took so long for it to finally get the attention that it needed so people know what kind of guy he is and those other people on the sets what they were doing too and nothing was done it really nothing was done cut out now i'm going to i'm going to push back a little bit sure. because the series mm -hmm. painted you in this way that you were just the guy that was doing what he wanted and mm -hmm. people were afraid to confront you about things. So say, just humor yes, me, say they were that afraid. that was the case. What would have been the ultimate way to, okay, if nobody on the set, if all of the dozens and dozens of adults that were on the set, if they didn't say anything, if my bosses said, if they insisted, you gotta make a change here, you gotta cut that, I had to do it, I had no choice. Got it. Now this next one, it kinda hit close to home. Mm -hmm. uh, being a new father, yeah, he says that, but um, Victoria Justice, she said something, and then he started taking her gradually out of the show. Like, you saw less and less of her, and then you just stopped seeing her. And she just stopped being in anything, pretty much. So, for him to say that, and then for that to happen to her, I wouldn't be opposed of, to my child being in the entertainment industry. It doesn't matter what age, yeah? Seeing some of those on-air dares, seeing it now from where you are now in your life, what do you think of that? On -air dares. I think that some Crazy. of the on-air dares went too far. I think they pushed the envelope too far. Not all of them, not most of them, but some did. Nickelodeon wanted to do their version of Fear Factor. At the time we were shooting all that, so I was tasked with doing these on-air dares with the All That cast. So we get with the writers and we come up with all these ideas and it's hard to do because we don't have the budget of Fear Factor sure. and we can't put the kids in dangerous situations like the adults are put in. So kids. it was hard to, yeah, hard to come up with stuff. But we would come up with all these ideas of dares they could do. We would uh, uh, give them to the network and then they would say, one, tell us the ones that were okay. Right. Those are the ones we shot, those are the ones that aired. At the time, I had no indication that any kid ever had a problem with them. but. When I was watching the show over the past two nights, I now know that there were kids who did have problems with the on-air dares. And it breaks my heart. And I'm so He's sorry. Watching I am so sorry to any kid who ever had to do a dare or anything that they didn't want to do or weren't comfortable oh, doing. Man. We went out of our way to make sure they were safe watching and, and that everything was done like properly. But if a kid was scared and didn't want to do it, kids shouldn't have had to do it. Yeah. Period. The end. Right. And if I had known at the time, I, I would have changed it on the spot. Now, we also saw the series highlight two former writers of yours, two women, mm -hmm. who spoke about a wage discrepancy. Now, I know that you don't divvy out salaries. 
Talk to me about that part. Well, you're correct. I have nothing to do with paying writers. I never have. Steve-O trying to protect himself. Now, you know. I know that you don't or anything like that. He is still trying to protect himself after all this time. It's crazy. I've never made a writer's deal. And of all the writers I've been in the writer's room with, I never even knew how much most of them were getting paid. Yeah, but we saw these two women who were writers for you sharing one salary. How mm -hmm. does that happen? It's very simple. There's a common practice in television when hiring writers. If you have a spot for a new writer, sometimes you'll go to two writers and say, hey, if you two new writers for your first job are willing to share a salary, you can both have the job. Mm. They have the That's opportunity to say, yes, that sounds good, or no, no thank you. In this case, can you imagine sharing a salary? I did another show where that teaming was done with two male writers, and they split a salary. I did another show where it was a male and a female writer, and they split a salary. So and these are all first-time writers. All first-time writers looking for their first gig. Got it. Now in the series, they also highlighted two black actors who said that they felt overlooked. Now I want to be clear. I'm never going to speak on anyone else's journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I can talk about my experience, how my experience was with you, what I saw prior to working with you. But again, I don't want to speak on anyone's journey. I saw you be honored for diversity in your work. Yes, and the reason for that is diversity has always been very important to me in my shows. If you go back to the very first Nickelodeon show I ever made, that's very evident, as it is in the second one, and then the first movie I ever made for Nickelodeon, which starred Keenan and Kel, and every show I did after that had a lead black actor in it. I'm very proud of that. It's very important to me. And not only am I proud that they were in my shows, I'm exceptionally proud of the achievements they've had beyond my shows and they've gone on to bigger and better things and that gives me a great sense of pride well something that really oh. kind of bothered me was how they depicted your relationship with the cat oh my god yeah it bothered me too yeah just me being there i better. knew the dynamic was trust i understood that in situations where they may have had turmoil whether it be with their families whether it be other castmates they came to you versus how they made you look. With that said, Amanda Bynes was brought up in the series Amanda. and her emancipation and how you were involved in that. Can you talk to us about it? I was it assaulting her sure. all the time. Um, Amanda was between the ages of 16 and Horrible. 17. Horrible. And she Horrible. wanted to get emancipated from her parents, Horrible. Mm -hmm. Horrible. which was a fairly common thing with yeah. successful young actors, at least at the time. Sure. Um, and she wanted that for herself. So she turned to her team, which included her lawyer, her, her agent, her manager, her publicist, Lord me, because she included me as part of her team, thought of me that way. He said, too, it was plenty of times um, when everyone would be on set that him and Amanda Bynes would be, would be gone at the same time. Like, they both disappeared. So he was with her. We supported her. She tried to get emancipated. It ended up not working out. She didn't. Well, since we're here, let's stay here for a moment. There was also an incident where she had ran away from home. If yes. You would. Um, can you talk to us a little bit just to clear the air of exactly what happened in that situation? Yes. Uh, one night, it was very late, well after midnight, one or two in the morning, phone rang. I answered. It was Amanda. She was upset. She was in distress. She had had some conflict with her parents, I think her father, and she called me. I was immediately concerned about her safety. I called someone who I knew was fairly nearby. That person was able to go and pick her up. Then I knew she was safe. I felt better. She ended up being taken to the police. Well, regardless of what some people may think, I think it's only positive that you are there for people when they need you. That said, let's talk about some of the things that have just been swirling. You're doing, bro. You were banned what are you from doing? the set. Never, never, never happened. That is a false rumor. What happened? Add it to the list of false Talk rumors. Talk to me. What happened? They were adult actresses at the time, and they had their own specific reasons for not wanting to do the show anymore. Mm. I'm not judging that. It got tense, and what they don't know, maybe, is I did everything I could to make that show go away. My producer partner at the time we would call and say, this is a not a good situation. Okay. So I, I decided I'm going to do what most showrunners do, 
which is you're not on the set. There's a director there to shoot it. I'll go up to the writer's room. I'll work on the next script. But yeah. because everybody is so used to me caring about every detail of every show so yeah. much, for me not to be on the set, yeah, maybe some people thought I got banned. So it was more of an assumption because this guy's usually here and now he's not. I don't know if it was an assumption. I don't know if somebody thought they were making me look bad by saying I got banned uh, from the set. I have no idea. Okay. All I know is I was never banned from the set. Yep. The darkest part of this series. He's telling on himself. Discuss child predators. He's telling on himself. Now, I want to make sure that we clear a couple of things up. Okay. Brian Peck was not hired by you. No, Brian I did Peck. not hire Brian Peck. This was a Tolan Robbins production? Yeah. And when Does they... it make a difference? If Brian Peck was hired by him or not, he was still allowing him to work on that set. He still allowed him to work around all those kids. There was just no... Oh, God. I can't even talk. If I was a parent of one of these kids hearing all this, I'd be brutally upset. Oh my god. I'd be brutally upset. I'd be brutally upset. And I talked, and he told me what had happened. I was more devastated by that than anything that ever happened to me in my career thus far. Mm. And I told him, I'm here for you. What do you need? Which Drake mentioned in the show that we watched last night. And Next, I heard that he went to court when this guy was being tried, Peck. And when Drake walked in, he saw 50 people sitting on the side of the courtroom supporting Peck. A lot of them pretty famous. Of course, Drake was devastated that that happened. And, and even more disappointing, 41 of those people wrote letters for Peck, character wrong. letters yeah. praising him for who he was and asking for leniency and they knew that he was guilty they knew he had confessed to some degree mm -hmm. and they still did this he did confess it's I, recorded it's, that that's baffling that adults would do that yeah. and I don't know if people know this but Drake's mom a lovely woman who I stay in contact with this day she came to me at the time and she said, Dan, I'm not good with words like you are. And would you help me with my speech for the judge? And I said, of course. And I did. And he ended up going to prison and served. in his time and them fake ass tears what are you trying what are you thinking you fool with this who do you think who do you actually think you're fooling with this I like That's some fake. Yeah, that was probably the darkest part of my career. And here's the kicker that I really don't get. After he got out of prison and was, to my knowledge, a registered sex offender, he was hired on a Disney Channel show. I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Um, I never... Um, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that, man. Are you okay? You want to take a minute? No, I'm all right. Let's keep going. Yeah? No. He doesn't need to take a minute. He won't even cry in. Pack some important things. You set the record straight on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Before I let you get out of here, I appreciate the vulnerability that you use in knowing that there's definitely things that you... Don't do this. What are you doing? Is there anything that we haven't discussed? 
anything that if you could go back and navigate the, the journey differently, what would that look like? Um, yeah, there's definitely things that I would do differently. Um, one that I think would be really, really important is when you're hiring young actors, minors, to work in television, I would suggest that we have a licensed therapist. Nobody's taking your advice at all. Oversee that process for the specific reason of making sure that those kids really wanted to do this job, that they really wanted to be on television. Maybe they should even be informed about what that means. What's it going to mean if you're famous? What's that going to mean? Yeah, she didn't like driving, so he would stay at Brian's house when he had audition. That's insane. That's insane. She would let him stay at Brian's house. That's insane. On social media, what's it going to mean within your family? Yeah. Let them find out. And then that way, if a kid doesn't want to be on a TV show, they can opt out. Yeah. That, that psychologist, that therapist could come to us and say, this kid is, is, doesn't want to do it, or their parents aren't, aren't uh, understanding of what's going to come. And then we could avoid the mistake of ever putting a kid in a TV show that didn't want to be there. Um, and additionally, the main thing that I would change is how I treat people and everyone. I, I definitely, at times, didn't give people the best of me. I, I didn't show enough patience. I could be cocky and definitely over on. And sometimes just yelling? straight up rude and obnoxious. Welcome to the stream. I am so sorry that I ever was. And um, I, when I watched the show, I could see the hurt in some people's eyes, and it made me feel awful and regretful and sorry. Um... I wish I could go back, you know, especially to those earlier years of my career and bring the growth and the experience that I have now and just do a better job and never, ever feel like it was okay to be an asshole to anyone. This ever. did not have the effect he um, thought it would. He really well, thought people would just I, I wanted eat this to up. Make just funny believe. TV shows for kids, and we definitely did that. But if I could go back. I would get it done in different ways. I, Eyes where you just know he's I'd just be ugh. nicer as often as possible and listen more Terrible. to the people on my team. And um, I would do everything that I could to make sure that everyone had a good experience. Uh, that's what I'd do differently. Dan, I appreciate your time. Oh I my appreciate God. you. Get me out of here. Thank you.